Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Moore. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny Olson. Got something here for the art lovers amongst you here. I, I would like to have you guess just what artist did this remarkable piece of work. Would you say it was Picasso or Rembrandt or Leonardo da Vinci? Well, I hate to disappoint you, but it was me. <laughs> and actually, I didn't really mean to do it on... Oh, come on. No, this is something that I do while I was talking to somebody on the telephone. You know how you do it. It's a doodle. In other words, the words up here, don't forget, I happen to have a little pad next to my phone, and I make notes to myself about stuff I'm not supposed to forget. And I didn't even realize I was drawing it, but that's the way it came out, and it is, of course, a, a doodle. Now, our first guest today is both an ardent doodler, and he is an expert on that subject, and we'll meet him in a moment as soon as he tries to, uh, well, let's say hold of the panel first here on To Tell the Truth. Bill Cullen. Maggie Craft. Gene Raven. And Kitty Carlisle. He says, wore your nightgown again, huh, Kitty? It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it shows that you know. Yeah. It's a jalabaya. It's a jalaba. It's a what? A jalaba. A jalaba. Right. It's a jalaba by you, by I me. It's a jalabaya. Are they in, in, in <laughs> Egypt? Wait, my chopped liver? Yeah. <laughs> I had one of those last night, yeah, too. Yeah, that's good. Hi there, honey. You look, are you dressed? Oh, it's too late. I love your dress. <laughs> too late. <laughs> too late. All right, then, let's forge Thank ahead. You. Let us meet our doodler. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Norman Urith. Number two. My name is Norman Urith. Number three. My name is Norman Urith. And only one of these gentlemen, of course, can be the real Norman Urith, and so here is his story. I, Norman Urith, am a doodler. The dictionary defines doodling as drawing pictures, symbols, etc., abstractedly on whatever material comes to hand while the mind is otherwise occupied. As a dedicated doodler myself, I became passionately interested in the subject of doodling and doodlers. I wrote about a thousand letters to famous people, asking them for samples of their doodles. I also researched the history of doodling and discovered that doodling is not exclusively the product of our modern culture. Cavemen doodled on the walls of their caves, and doodles were uncovered when the excavation of Pompeii took place. Even some of the To Tell the Truth panel are doodlers. For instance, now, here is a squiggly-looking doodle by Gene Rayburn. I did that? Yes, I did. Is it a sailboat on the sea? Of course it is. And Bill Cullen's doodle uh, takes us underwater rather than on it. Bill Cullen did a fish. Now, here are some non-panel doodles. Here is a man whose doodle denotes drive and direction. Baseball's Ted Williams. And finally, a highly sophisticated creation, a doodle by Paul Newman. <laughs> I have written what I consider to be the definitive work on the subject of doodling, and I call it, appropriately enough, the Doodle Book. And it is signed, Norman Urit. <laughs> and we'll begin our questioning after a few doodles from our clients. All right, here we go. Now, remember that one of these gentlemen only can be Norman Urys, author of the Doodle Book, and we'll begin the question with a fellow who doodled a sailboat for us, Gene Rayburn. Thank yes. you, Gary. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Urys, uh, number one, uh, how did the cavemen doodle? I thought, you know, the, those rocks were kind of hard and they needed a chisel and all that, and, and doodling is something you do kind of unconsciously. No, not at all. The cavemen doodled with flint or some other hard stone on the walls of the cave, strangely enough, close to the ground. If the artwork was up high, then it was an intentional work of art, whereas the doodles were primarily close to the ground where the cavemen were sitting and were doodled primarily with flint or with pieces of charcoal or, or sticks that and, were burnt. And they were doing something like talking on the phone with the other hand and doodling <laughs> with one hand. They were hardly doodling. Yeah. 
hardly Thank talking you. on the phone, yeah. but they were dawdling or doing yeah. nothing and just okay. forgetting. Thank you. All right, what, what, one question, Thank what is that? Gene, but it was a good one. Yeah. Let's go to Kitty. Number two, what were the doodles uh, in Pompeii? Were they close to the ground as well? How did you know they were doodles rather than designs? They had an aimless look about it. And were they close to the ground? Generally speaking, yes. Were they done with paint or with chisel? I would say some sort of charcoal. I see. Uh, number three, does it, um, is it true that a person with a complicated mind will do a complicated doodle and a person with a simple, or doesn't it really make any difference? Well, it's like handwriting analysis. Uh, you can make out what you want to make out I out see. of anything that you find. And number two, Orson did lots of doodles. I could generally tell what his state of mind was when I sat next to him on the panel by his doodles. Do you believe that's true? I believe in treating it as an art form, the way you would treat any art form. Rather than a psychological study. Thank you, Kitty. Let's go to Bill Cullen. We'll get number one's opinion on that. Do you think the doodles, a person doodles, reveal anything, Mr. Yoris, number one? No, I don't really, although there are many people that do. I don't really believe that it gives any insight into his personality, other than perhaps that an architect might draw... No. Uh, drawings resembling a building, or an artist might do things right. resembling his art. Thank all. you. Number three, if a person doodles nothing but dollar signs and stars, uh, what, what, what is the preoccupation that person might have? Well, I don't think you could really tell from his doodling, but he might have uh, visions of grandeur or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, the audience is missing out because it's during the Peggy commercial, who... Peggy said, I doodle nothing but dollar signs and stars. Right. <laughs> Uh, num number number two, uh, you you do deal with it as an art form. So all you've done is collected pictures. You haven't. Uh, what what is your text of the book consist of? Number two. It's a story of doodling from caveman to the present time, and it treats it from an art point of view. From an art point of view, the gentleman says, and Peggy. Peggy, number three. Where does the name Doodle come from? Nobody really knows. Oh, okay. Number two. Um, Nero, I don't know whether you think sort of, sort of sometimes looks like doodling. Do you consider that sort of high-class doodling? I mentioned it in the book, and as a matter of fact, I got a very interesting letter from Mr. Miro in which he says when he tries to figure something out of what he's going to do with his next painting, with the fingertips, he would draw subconsciously in the air what he's going to do. I would say it's an oral doodle. An oral doodle? Oral is mouth. Oh, oh. Oral. I mean, not written. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, number one, do you consider, the, for instance, the French cave drawings or the Spanish cave drawings doodles, or do you consider those a more advanced type of... Well, as like I, a let's go or something? Yeah, as I stated before, if it, if it resembles art, then it is not a doodle. It's something that's intentionally done as art. A doodle is some aimless type of drawing or scratching while the man is preoccupied with something else. Okay, and on that basis, we must make up our minds. What do you think? Is it number one? Or is it number two? What do you think about number three? It's going to cost you $50 for each wrong guess, $500 if all of the guesses are wrong. And Gene Rayburn, have you doodled the ballot? Yes, my Yes, friend? I have. Uh, I voted for number two, uh, Gary, because I think he contributed a little more information than he wanted to. And uh, even though I suspect his charcoal answer, uh, on the Pompeii paintings might not be accurate. Okay, so we got one for two. And what does Kitty think? Well, I thought it was number two when he stood up. And after the questioning was over, I still think it's number two. Hmm. Two for two, and Bill Cullen's up. You know, number two and number one both had very strong opinions on, on yeah. doodling and what it means. And number three, all the while, is sat back there and smiled benignly. And, the la and I vote for a benign smile, so I voted for number three. <laughs> That's a kindly way of saying smug. Smug, yes. Yeah, smug yeah. look Smug, like benign smile. Smugly yeah. benign smile. All right, and we go to Peggy. Well, I voted for number two, but you see, the thing is, I don't really think Miro's look like doodles. I think they really are a design rather than a, than a doodle. But I voted for you anyway, because you've got a lot of high-class thoughts. <laughs> We're almost on a limb, but not quite. So, well, the real, Norman Uris, please... Stand up. Ah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Uris. We'll be back to you in a moment. Number one, sir, what is your real name, please, and what do you do? My real name is Dave Oltars, and I'm an attorney in New York City. Uh-huh.
Member Feaster, what is your real name, please, and what do you do? My name is Jack Swaska, and I'm an account executive for ASCAP. For ASCAP. Let's get this directly from the expert. Mr. Uris, when somebody does doodle do uh, dollar signs and stars, what does, it, what does it mean, or don't you interpret? I don't interpret it as that. When I spoke later before about comparing it with modern art, I wasn't trying to imply that Miro's work was doodles. What I was saying, it, it has some sort of a look of it. Yes. Just as somebody could draw something that looks like a deliberate piece of art, but it isn't. Right. It, it depends on the state of mind. All righty. Now, I know that our audience will be interested in seeing some other famous doodles, and if you'll uh, comment on them as we show them here on the screen. Now, uh, that's what, Bill? What did you say? Good. That's good. Yeah. That's, oh, who that's is that, good. Mr. Urich? President Nixon. That's... Ah, that's me. That's, that's, uh, what would you say about that's it? That's very gone. graphic. Uh, <laughs> what would you say about it's it? It's a geometric Urich? design, and it reminds me very much of similar geometric designs I've seen by Leonardo da Vinci. That's hmm. right. It's very similar. Yeah. Well, next we have a man who almost made it to Mr. Nixon's job, but not quite. This is Hubert Humphrey. I think you could read into it whatever you like to read into it. I think that's part of the charm of it. To me, it looks like a locomotive. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. To me, yeah. it looks like the DNA, yeah. the, the chain reaction of the molecules. <laughs> okay, if that's what you like. <laughs> and here is a good friend of all of ours, a fellow from our business. Kenny Goodman. Bob Hope. Bob Hope. Bob Hope. It took me a long time to get one of Bob Hope's. A good friend of mine is a good friend of Bob Hope's, and he's been following around trying to get it. And Bob Hope would only doodle on uh, linen napkins. We couldn't get it out of the restaurant. Finally, <laughs> <laughs> somewhere over there, I think it says 80, 801 percent. That's Bob. That's Bob. Yeah, that's let's right. let's, let's look at Princess did. Grace and see what she did oh, here. That's, oh, that's pretty. Uh, actually, only the middle part of the flower is a doodle. The rest of it is a planned piece of art, and it really shows what you can do with something that starts out as a doodle, and then later you can make a planned piece of art with it. And I explain it in my book, The Doodle Book, and I have other illustrations. That's okay, well, one. thank you. It's been fascinating. Thank you very much, Norman Uris, and thank you, Impostors, for being with us here on To Tell the Truth. Now, this next one is really unusual. Our next guest recently got married under most extraordinary circumstances, and we'll meet her in a moment after a profitable pause. A friend of me. Our unique wife. <laughs> Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Christine Kwasovic. Number two. My name is Christine Kwasovic. Number three. My name is Christine Kwasovic. And here is Christine Kwasovich's marrying message. Here it goes like this. I, Christine Kwasovich, am a very new bride. I had a most unusual courtship. Here's the story. I read in a newspaper that a, that a young man was going to be deported unless he got married immediately. He wanted to stay in America very badly. Since I was single, I thought I'd look into this. I was not alone, however. 499 other girls wanted to meet Evo also and they ranged in age from 18 to 60. Well, I got to see Evo, and although he hardly spoke English, we knew in a minute it was just meant to be. He has a temporary stay now, while I have a permanent last name. Signed, Christine Kwasovic. You gotta admit, this is a different story. Bill Cullen, you wanna start on it? Number three, this Evo gotta be too much. Now, is, is he like the handsomest, most romantic fellow you ever saw, number th or was he when you first saw him, number three? Well, not at first. Uh, about four hours later, he was. Four hours it took him. That's fast, even in Pittsburgh. Number one, with, with 499 girls who sought his hand, do you think there's ever a possibility that Evo might mention this to you in an argument and say, well, you're not the only fish in the stream, or, uh, you know, regular Croatian words to that effect, number one? No, he, before we were even married, when I first met him, he, uh, he's from Yugoslavia and they're fa very family-orientated, and he's very devoted. 
Number two, before before this happened, had you had regular boyfriends and suitors, and were you going out on dates and things like that? Yes, but you see, I met Evo, and yeah. he just had the European charm about him. And... Thank you, Bill. That takes it. Thank you. Well, number one, how's it going? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, number two, how long does one have to stay married? I mean, if you, if, uh, God forbid, but I mean, if anything happened and you got a divorce, would they ship him right back to Yugoslavia? Well, there's a possibility of it now. He has to go to Germany to get a temporary visa. Why does he, he have to go to Germany? He doesn't have a passport now. Oh. He's on an extended... Uh, number three, where did this take place? In what city? Uh, I mean, where do you and got... live that you read it in the paper? Oh, we live in San Jose. San Jose, California. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, number one, what does Evo do for a living? Cement finishes. A what? Cement finishes. Oh, cement finishes. Uh, number three, did you have an interpreter? I mean, four hours of looking at one another doesn't really cement the bond. I mean, did somebody tell you what he was saying? And uh, He does well. He, he can speak some English, and now I'm helping him. Thank you. Uh, well, number... Thank you, Peggy. Let's go to Gene Raver. Number one, uh... Do you agree that all Yugoslavs have a certain charm about them and a sex appeal? Uh-oh. Oh, I don't know. I don't know any other... Well, I know all John's friends. How do you... I know one who doesn't have. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about me, number one? Uh, I've always liked you. No, my parents were born in Yugoslavia, and I speak the language. Say a word that he taught you. You're not allowed to. You can't do that. Not allowed to go now. Not allowed. All right. That's a no-no. Uh, number two, <laughs> where were you married? What city were you married in? Reno. In Reno, Nevada. Yeah. And uh, number three, you say you live in San Jose now? Yes. And uh, when will his status in this country be permanent? Well, it will be permanent as soon as he gets his passport and goes to Germany and gets his papers. Then he can come back to the United States, and after five years, he can be a citizen. After five years, she says, if indeed she is the one. Okay, so Kitty? Number one, how did Evo get into the country? He jumped a ship, a Greek ship in New York. Ah, ship. and made his way to California. He was here for four months. Speaking no English? Not here, no. How extraordinary. Number two, how did you find out that there were 499 other girls waiting in line? Where did you meet him? Well, I met him at his boarding house, but it was in the San Jose Mercury Papers. Oh, that, that there were all those girls waiting. And number three, who was the interpreter? There was no interpreter. Oh, I see. You managed without an interpreter. There was only the man he was living with. Right. And with. number one, how long have you been married? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Oh. oh. <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> And on that, we must make up our minds. What do you think? Is it number one? Or do you think it's number two? Or have you a preference for number three? In any event, it's $50 down for each wrong vote. $500 if all the votes are wrong, and Bill Cullen starts. I don't like to vote for ethnic reasons, but Gene, is, is Yugoslav, is that a Slavic background? Uh, yes. Number one has a Slavic look. She looks that way, and she looks like a fellow by the name of Evo would go big with her, like a Bill would die or a Gene, no matter what he is, would fall. But it's number one, I'm sure. Whatever that meant, we got one vote for number one. Let's go to Peggy. Oh, he may be Yugoslavian. I don't think she looks Yugoslavian. She does. Number two sounds as though she comes from New York. I don't think it's, I don't know. Number one looks like a very happy new bride, all kind of shy and glowing and blushy, and I voted for her. I'm sure it's you. <laughs> okay, it's two for one. And Jean Rayburn? Well, she looks more Scandinavian or Cal pure Californian than uh, Slavic, uh, number one. I voted for number one because I think Peggy nailed it. She has that rosy glow of a new bride. Hey, there are three votes for the rosy glow. And what's Kitty going to do? Are you going to make it unanimous, well, Kitty? guess what? What? It's number one. Uh -oh. Number one, when Bill said, you mean in four hours he, you found Evo too much and she just beamed all over, as much as to say, more than that. <laughs> Keep in mind that we pay $500 if nobody guesses the correct one. <laughs> All right. Who better to pick out the real girl than the man who picked her out in the first place? So, Evo, come out here and pick out your bride. the rosy 
Lee Glow got it right on the nose. We'll be back to talk to you in a minute or two. Number two, what is your real name, please, and what do you do? My real name is Becky Kay. I'm the fashion coordinator at Gazebo's Boutique in New York City. And number three, what is your real name, please, and what do you do? My name is Leslie Zerla, and I'm a professional clam opener. Where do you open professional clams, number three? <laughs> All those that aren't equity. In New Jersey. Hey, I saw in, you on a New show. Jersey. You were on a show opening clams with, with adhesive tape on your fingers, no? No, no that no, was no. putting sardines I, I want to find out now about, about Evo and Christina. Gene, talk some Yugoslavia. Do you talk Yugoslavia? Yes, yes. The serbo Croatian is Kako je braće? Dobro, dobro. Kako je žena? Dobro. On a znab, a dobro kuhat? Ah, cook it, cook it. Italian cook it. Hey, lad. He says she cooks in Italian. <laughs> well, Christina, we are we are grateful to one young particular reporter out on the San Jose. What was it? The San Jose News. San Jose Mercury. Yeah. Uh, he was the one who put this in the paper and told about uh, Evo's problem, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh huh. We wanted. What, what was his name? Uh, Rick Carroll. Rick Carroll, says we wanted to give him a thank you. And thank you, Evo. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Imposters. Thank you, Gene Rayburn, for being here with us on the Tell the Truth. Hey. Well, hey there. I mean, goodbye there, because we, we got to leave now. It's like that. You know, we'll see you tomorrow. Transportation and other considerations provided by Chevrolet featuring the 1971 Impala with sidecar door beams, more wheelbase, more glass, more sound deadening materials, all at a very Chevrolet price. Hotel accommodations, courtesy Delmonico's Hotel on Factual Park Avenue, ideal for gracious living. Visit famous Delmonico's restaurant for superb continental cuisine. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, a Mark Goodson, Bill Kaufman production. The groovy games continue as Larry Blyden hosts What's My Line next on Game Show Network. Thank you.